Good evening, everyone. My name is Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and it looks like my face isn't. <laughs> Hold up. Um, my face is gone. Hold on. Um, where is the video capture device? There it is. There it is. Okay. Ah. <laughs> Glorious. Okay. I'll just slap that over here in the corner. Fade, 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 fade. There I am. Hello, everyone. So, um, I have not played in studio for a while, and the reason why is because I was doing a contract for um, a company, I don't want to say who, but that contract is done, and I am back to um, building and scripting on my own, and it has been a while. So, I haven't touched Lua scripting or code for since the last one of these videos, so please be gentle. Don't make fun of me if I mess stuff up or if I'm doing stuff wrong. But I thought I'd catch you up on, on what I've kind of been playing with and what I've been doing. Um, the placement system on here. So whenever you go in here, do, 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 come on. Oh, it's locking up on me. Oh, did I hit F6? Oh, I did. Oops, I hit the wrong one. F6 starts up an entirely new instance. I don't, don't, I don't want that. Hold on. Close that. Goodbye. Here we go. I want F5. Run. There we go. So you should be able to see that. Okay, so here I am, right? And if I try and do a ladder, it's now different. I can't rotate. I can't turn. Stuff like that. Because before we were using... Uh, an object and now I have gone through and I've placed everything into a model because um, by placing stuff into a model that model can contain things or folders that would correspond to other things for example like a ladder it may have specific properties on like how it needs to be filled um, that doesn't really make sense it needs scripts it needs scripts. So, like this thing right here, see how it's got a bounding box? It's a wedge. It has a, a box around it. And I noticed that Defaultio's or Lumber Tycoon 2, everything that you place kind of has this bounding box around it, except for items that you purchase and place on the ground. So, and, and even then, it has. Um, like with the sawmills, there's definitely a box around everything. Same thing with uh, a truck placement, the, the spawn pads. If you try and place one down, it has this bounding box around it. And I noticed that whenever I was placing stuff on my game, it didn't have a bounding box. And I thought, oh, that's kind of weird. And that's when I realized, oh, he's got this stuff in like modules. So that's what I did over here, like under etc. there's a ladder. Right? And then the ladder has parts. So these are going to be inside models. Um, so, for example, this 8x1x8, eight by by eight, okay? It actually has um, blueprint script in it, right here. Percentage field equals total field plus blah blah blah, right? And then I've got an actual GUI, which is currently hidden. Hold on, is it? Active, ah, enabled, there we go. So you can't see it until it's enabled. But I need that to be able to place the blueprint down and then give it like a percentage or some kind of filler to say, hey, you're filling it up with wood, stuff like that. <clears throat> so I need to group this. So I'm just gonna hit G. I'm gonna go into it. I'm gonna grab that eight by one by eight and place that like that. So now the floor has a model called 8x1x8, and that means I should now have a model inside my <clears throat> blueprint that I can place. So let's go to floors, 8 one by oh, blah, 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 blah. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Uh, it looks like it's... <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> is it falling through the the floor? Hold on. Oh yeah, 
it's falling through. Okay, hold on, stop. What happened there? Is this a physical property of some kind? Hold on, is it anchored? Oh, it's not anchored, that's why. <coughs> okay, that should correct it. All right, try that again. One. By the way, these are not tutorials. These are us going through, or me going through, because I've never done some of the stuff that you're about to see before. So, I mean, I'm just trying to get stuff figured out and working. This looks horrible, by the way. It looks so 1980s. 1990s. Vector line graphics. Okay, so that should be fixed now. That's good. It is weird how it doesn't allow me to line stuff up correctly. It's just like, nope. See, normally I should be able to hit that wall and then like go up the side of the wall. Hmm. That's a weird jump. It just, it does not like it. It's like, nope, I'm going to go up there to the top of that. Hmm. Okay, maybe I've got the placement system wrong. Let's move on to something else. Um, for now, let's go ahead and create um, models for all of these. Uh, control G, and I'm just going to rename that one. Model, paste, done. We're going to copy that one, escape. Whoa, that was an F1, I don't want F1. Thank you. Come on, get back over there. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to rename. No, I don't want to rename. I want to group to put it into a model. Now I'll rename the model to the blueprint. Copy. Let's see. Do uh, group and rename paste. There we go. This should be working correctly. Did I remodel those two? Nice. Hmm. So essentially, if they're under floors and stuff, that that eight by eight, uh, eight by one by eight, I could put this as just one kind of script, but it, it's going to require a whole bunch of different properties and stuff. Like how much, how many units does it have to take to fill it in? I guess I could. I could probably figure that out by the volume of the object. Hmm. I don't know if that would work though. <sighs> That's not going to work. Cause what if it's a, what if it's a different kind of material? Like for example, the, the countertops, they're a lot denser inside lumber. So it takes a lot more wood to fill it in. Contemplations. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to group that. And then we're going to rename the model to what it was. Oops, 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 oops. Paste. <clears throat> By the way, if you don't know what I'm doing. Um, okay, so this part right here, it's a singular part. I click on it. I press F2 to rename that part. I'm pressing Control C to copy the name. Hit Escape. And then I press Control G, and that puts it into a group. Now, if I try and hit F2 again, it's going to whatever folder I'm in, the first object gets changed. But um, so this model, select it, and then I'm going to oops, and then I'm going to press F2 to rename it, and I'm going to hit Control V to paste back in the name that I copied from earlier. Hit Enter, done. So that's that's how I've been kind of flying through this: the wedge, copy, escape. Control group, woo, F2, paste, enter. So now that everything's inside a model, that means I should be able to do the first part where it's select it from the menu, and then it turns into a model. And I can place that model, good. If I don't want to place that model anymore, I just press one, so. Uh-oh. <clears throat> Phantom part. Why did that mess up? Oh, did it still have phantom part as something? 
<laughs> Let's try that again. One, floors, one by one by one. Oh no, none of them are anchored. <laughs> I guess, I guess I should probably do that real quick. Oh, they're all in models. Okay, right click, select children. There we go. Now I should be able to go anchored. Click. I should anchor all of those. That one was already anchored, so. F5. I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm talking really light, but I am in a very chill mood tonight. Mood 24-7. Very nice. Look at that. Now I'm not going to be able to place this because it'll break. Because technically a model does not have a C-frame. How do you get the rotation of a model? Hmm... That is a great question for Roblox devs. How to get <coughs> rotation of model in Roblox? How to rotate an entire model? Hmm, close enough. And this is from C underscore shopper. Hey guys, so I've been trying to figure out how I am able to rotate an entire model. Here's the code that I'm using. Piece colon set primary part C frame, other part get primary part C frame, blah, 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 equals C frame angles plus C frame. It rotates the primary part, but <clears throat> the other parts in the model, model's orientation, unfortunately remain the same. So for what I'm doing, I pretty much need to keep using the get set primary part method otherwise I might run into some bugs appreciate it are the other parts welded to the primary part use uh, to the primary part using welds not weld constraints that was a fast reply actually no, sorry that was from exist exist top contributor actually all the parts of the model are anchored so using no welds or no constraints. Alt, do you have a quick repo file? Okay. I might, uh, clarity what that is. Uh, a place file. Could just be a base plate where it occurs, but you could reproduce the issue and it could be fixed. I actually, uh, I'm actually really stupid. Oh, what? No, you're not stupid, C-sharp. I, for some reason, thought I put the right axis on the rotate, but I guess I didn't realize it correctly. Hmm. As I changed the axis just to test real quick, that did the trick. Well, thank you for your help. I appreciate it so much. Um, if you haven't solved it yet, this script should work properly. Just make sure that everything is anchored and remember to set the primary part. Script up parent colon set primary part C frame and then parentheses script dot parent colon get primary part C frame time C frame dot front. Wow. <clears throat> oh, no problem. I'm glad you figured it out. Cool. So I would have to set the primary part. I mean, most of the things are just, oops, oops I did not hit. I did not mean to hit that. Most of the things are a singular part, uh, with the exception of like my blue box here. Which, by the way, that took me forever to figure out how to get the, the face on there of the model. <clears throat> yeah, the texture. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen this or not. Uh, Assetgame.roblox.com forward slash thumbs forward slash asset dot a s h x question mark your width equals number and height equals number and asset id equals the decal that you uh saved or the the model object of what it is and you can you can add a camera to that specific piece and it creates these which is great for blueprints so now i need uh 
I need labels on the side of these. In fact, can I duplicate that? Let's see. Duplicate. Nice. And can I change the face? The face is the back. I want the face to be the front. Whoops, not the left. Front. There we go. So, front and back for the images. <coughs> This is not going to be an Xbox. This is going to be a a blueprint, I think. So I need to add a label. Can I just add a label? Hold on. I don't think I can add just a label to it. I think I have to add a surface decal first. Surface GUI. I think. Possibly. Okay, so we want this to be on the left side. Is that right? So change this from that to left. There we go. And it highlighted the side that it was going to be. And then we're going to hit plus. Text box. No, not a text box. Kill that. We're going to add a label. Text label. That thing is huge. Oh my goodness. That's not good. Hmm. Would this be easier if I were to just set it on its side? That way I wouldn't have to mess with like the, the rotation or the angle of the text box. Hmm. How would I rotate? Is there an angle? Size constraint, visibility, text label. So it just says label. Um, okay, so first off, the background color needs to be transparent. So the background transparency is going to be a one. Border mode, border size pixel is going to be a zero. That way it'll make everything disappear. And then our standard color is just going to be white. So let's look down here for text color. There's text color. And we're going to turn that to white. Hit OK. The text currently says label. And we're going to change that to um, text. Just text label. Text label. I mean, we could have left it as label. It would have been fine. So how do I rotate? Um, text scale. Whoa. Wait, is there a... Wasn't there a GUI button of some kind? Hold on. Control Z that, because I have no clue what I just messed with. It was a rock wall back in the back. Whoopsie. <laughs> Don't grab the rock wall behind the blueprint that you're trying to do. Uh, yeah, it does not work. Hmm, whale. I can see the T, the beginning of a T right there. Here, let's uh, let's um, scale this up just a little bit. One, two, three. What is this, four? Four, there we go. So now we can see the text label. Pixels per stud is 50 pixels per stud. Um, sizing mode, pixels per stud. This is on the GUI itself. I'm wondering if I have to turn the GUI. My influence, adorn. Ooh. Oh, you can choose like in a different adornment or adorny. Always on top. Yeesh. Hmm. Let's just Google it. How to rotate label on GUI on surface GUI. I know it's possible. Roblox. <coughs> Here we go. Surface GUIs. Eight by four. Nice. Signboard. Surface GUI. Got it. Mm-hmm. Very nice, very nice, good, good. 
offset danger beware running around on this platform it's easy to fall off good tutorial I like stuff like that <clears throat> light influence Ooh. light influence property changes the image cool related so how do I rotate it rotate a surface GUI let's just do this because it seems like this is going to be easier let's take this decal right here and can we oops can we move it to the top let's just move to the top there you go it's easy take this one come on this decal here we'll move this to the bottom bottom <laughs> oops oh no 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 I don't need two of them Send that to the bottom. That way the text label is going to be on the side automatically. And then we'll just push this back down into a desirable size. Um, what size do we want it to be? Currently it's 2 by 2 by 2.5. So that's width, height. Okay, so let's do 2.5 and do this one as a 2. There we go. Looks a little bit better. So we should be able to close that window. Yay! Yay! <clears throat> okay. So. That's 0.5, isn't it? The size. Is that 0.5? Yeah, it is 0.5. 2 and 0.5. So our surface GUI is going to be 2 and 0.5. Mm, absolute size is 100. Whoa. Why can't I change the absolute size? Oh, didn't I change something here? Wouldn't it like stretch or something? Reset on spawn archive clips. Auto localize. Oh, that's that. Okay, so I think auto localize changes the um, text to a. Well, like if you're if you're in Mexico, it changes it to Spanish. If you're in Germany, it changes it to German. I think that's what localization means. <clears throat> Hold on. How long have I been recording? 22 minutes. Oh my gosh. I haven't really done anything in this one, but I mean, we are absolutely playing with GUIs. We are going to need to duplicate that and place it on the other side, but I want to get it to the right size first. Okay, this is 200 by... 50. Can I change this? Let's change this to 2 by 0.5. How big is that? That is tiny. Okay, so it's, it's not working. Let's try 20 by 5. Holy cow. Oof. Oof. Mm -mm. It's not going to work. So they had 200 a second ago. Oh, what is what is this? Is this offset? So if I do like 0.5, does it go halfway in the middle? Ooh. Okay. Okay. Working with it. Working with it. What happens if I do a 1? I do one down here. Oh, okay. What size is the surface GUI? Pixels per stud. Let's do let's do 200 pixels per stud. <gasps> Whoa, that cleaned it up big time. What if we just do 100? It's a little blurry, but I bet it'd be less. You know what? Let's go with 200. 200 pixels per stud. And that looks that looks beautiful. <clears throat> pixels per stud, fixed size. Nice. Can I do fixed size? <laughs> okay. So can this one be 20? No, I did... 
You know what, I want to do pixels per stud because that seems easier to work with. It just seems simpler. So what about the size itself? It has an absolute position, absolute size. So why is this? One twenty. Can I go eighteen? What does that do? What if I just do fifteen? No, that doesn't work either. What about ten? Five. One. Ah, oh, there we go. One. So, okay. Not quite sure that I understand that. The size of the text label on the surface is one by one, uh, one comma one, one comma one, which is a, a UDIM, right? It's a UDIM two, because it's got an XY comma XY. So I guess, I guess it'd be two UDIMs in one, like an array. Anyhow, if you didn't follow along with that, um, UDIMs are a unit of measurement on a 2D surface. <clears throat> Is that also why they call um, memory? Like DIM, D-I-M memory? Because it would use arrays like that as well for storing memory. Maybe it could be. Okay, so I want this one to be text label. Uh, what do we want to call it? It's it's text label, so I want to do um, let's see, duplicate, and we're gonna call this text label shadow. Shadow, whoops, I cannot spell shadow correctly. But this one, I want it to be offset just slightly, so one point five. Whoa, no, not that one. Take that back down. One point five. Ha ha. There we go. And then one point one there. And then this one's offsets one point one as well. Whew. That seems ten. Okay, let's just do two. It does not like points at all. But we're going to change this color, uh, text color three, to like a grayish color. And we want the Z axis to be down, don't we? <clears throat> How do I push that to the back? Like, push. Wait, can I put that in there? No, I cannot. Put that one in there. Well, it could, but it's going to be in the wrong spot. Okay. Hmm. Oh, there we go. That worked. By changing the order that I put them into the object, it actually put them in the correct order on the outside. So on this one, I'm going to go to. Let's go. Let's go three. Why not? Same here. Three. Four. Four. Ooh, that looks nice. It's like this little drop shadow back behind it. Maybe I can go white. Can I go white? Hold on. Text color. Right, that's clip descendants. No, don't clip anything. There we go. Let's change the color just to white. Bright white. Ooh. <laughs> nice. Nice! It looks embossed. Embossed. Hmm. I wonder if I could... Oh, ooh. Let's, let's get crazy. Let's get crazy and duplicate this again. Duplicate. And then I'm just going to take and put that in. No. I want this to go in first. And then this one. And then this one. Oh, wait. We're going to have to... There we go.
perfect. Now the second one, instead of being, oh, wait, are we going to be able to put the offset in the opposite direction? Hmm. Okay, it's four, so let's do negative four. Same on this one, do negative four. Doesn't look right. One negative four. What if we just do four? Huh. Let's do four up here and negative four down here. Haha. <laughs> no, it's still wrong. Hmm. Yeah, let's not do that. We'll just get rid of that. Delete. Bad idea code. Bad idea. So leave this alone for now. We are at 30 minutes, but I want to duplicate. And we're going to take this. Oops. We're going to make it on the opposite side. So it's currently on what left? Left, and we'll change that to right. So now we should have text labels on both sides. Nice. Yay. So basically <clears throat> I'm getting to the point where I want this to be a box that you purchase from the, the shop. And when you do, it's going to disappear and place the actual opening box, the one that you can open and it will place the uh, blueprint that's inside that into your your actual hammer or your, your build tool. So, and if you don't have a build tool, you don't have one, and then the first time that you get one, it will give you the build tool, which should save to your character, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, there's a lot of work to be done. I apologize for not being here and not making these videos for you because I know that you love them. I know that I love making them, and it's just, it's been a while, so. Thank you everyone for watching this episode of Let's Make a Game with me, Heath Haskins, Code Primate. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. Remember, this content is not intended directly at children, but for the entire family and for all ages, from ages 0 to 999, however old or young you happen to live to. I love you guys very much. Have a great night. We'll talk to you very soon. Where's my outro button? Where's that? There it is. Outro! Thank you.